Hi everybody, Levi Clay here and I'm back again for another vlog. It has been a while, it has been a good month or so since I've done one of these pro shot vlogs and anyone that's been following my channel will have seen that I am still doing a lot of content, in fact I'm doing more content than ever, but I'm using screen capture software to be able to make more videos on the fly, do videos where I'm working on transcription things uh, and answering, doing video responses to people and helping people out with things. The quicker I can make videos, the more of them I can do, but it is always nice to do a video like this. I'll just say right at the start of this video, if you are currently not a subscriber to this channel, then please do hit that subscribe button. Well worth hitting, it helps the channel out, and more importantly, it helps to get you my content. The only reason I say this is because I just recently saw in my statistics that while I get a decent amount of views on my YouTube channel, about 75% of the people watching these videos aren't actually subscribed to the channel. So if that applies to you, hit that button. Whee! So this video is going to be on the subject of listening to music more objectively listening to music more objectively. Now, we have to accept the fact that music is not, music is not objective. Music is art, it's subjective, it's open to interpretation. But that doesn't mean that we can't become more objective listeners, that we can try harder to be more open-minded with the music we listen to and hopefully develop our tastes a little bit more and improve our kind of versatility professionally um, in the music field. So the example that I always give for this is uh, I often hear people making jokes about things like country music or jazz, i.e. genres that you don't enjoy. And that's totally understandable. I do understand that and it's, it's funny, but at the same time, it doesn't make sense to me because being uh, a guy that grew up listening to a lot of metal, I'm very, very familiar with people saying things like, you know, oh, I don't listen to metal, it's all just noise. People writing off the genre of music that I love and uh, that actually annoying me because I'm, I'm coming from this perspective of, of understanding of the genre and questioning whether the person that's throwing out this statement really knows what they're talking about. In fact, I'm pretty confident that they don't know what they're talking about. Um, so it kind of stands to reason that if all metal isn't noise, the reason they're saying that is because they're ill-informed, so maybe they need to apply themselves a little bit more objectively to it. Um, and this really makes sense when you think about the genre of metal and things like that. Like, obviously, I grew up as a metalhead, but that doesn't mean that I like all metal. Simple as that. In fact, your tastes develop as time goes on. There's no denying that. The music and the metal music that I enjoy today is probably considerably harsher on the ear than some of the metal that I was listening to when I was 13 years old. In fact, if you played the metal that I... Uh, still enjoy today to 13 year old Levi um, he'd probably be quite shocked and say that's just noise the point is I understand that I don't love all metal so it's perfectly reasonable to suggest that I might potentially not hate all country music I might not hate all jazz music I might not hate all Indonesian gamelan I pretty much hate all Indonesian gamelan I'm putting that one out there Though, if you've got any uh, examples to prove me wrong, happy to listen to them. So, as a transcriber, this is something that I have to come face to face with time and time again. I'll often have to work on projects that don't grab me. I start working on something and to me it's noise, it's things that I don't enjoy. And that doesn't mean that it's always going to stay that way because what I've learned to do as a transcriber is listen to things a little bit more objectively to be more open-minded. In fact, I remember a few years ago I was transcribing these uh, acoustic pieces for a guy um, by some, some geezer playing some classical guitar stuff and I transcribed it all and got to the end and went, well, you know, he was quite a good player but not my cup of tea. That chap is a guy there by the name of Buster B. Jones who just a few years later became one of my favorite guitar players. Um, it, it took being exposed to someone like that and having it sit in the back of your head, in the back of your mind, for it to really sort of mature in your ears. That's an important thing to do, give music a chance. And the way that I kind of uh, can draw a parallel to maybe uh, something that you understand, something you might agree with is, I have a wife. You may also have a wife or a girlfriend or a boyfriend or a family member that you enjoy sharing music with. Now, my wife is not particularly musical, not particularly musical, I mean, certainly not, uh, she's not really a player, and she 
certainly doesn't enjoy a lot of the jazz and weird music that I listen to. In fact, I did some uh, <laughs> some Hayley Clay reacts videos where she reacted to some of the uh, Jimmy Herring Project Z um, Lincoln Memorial album, um, and just watching her facial expressions, not being able to comprehend. Do you think what you was could take turns just, instead of just doing it all together? It sounds like a like five people all trying to show off at once, and I don't. Is this guy like a musical genius? Yeah. Why can't he make things that sound nice? Uh, funny to me because that's genuinely how she feels. Now, I can't, obviously can't tell her she's wrong because she genuinely does feel that way. But the point is, what I've learned over time is when we're driving and I'm listening to something, it's no, there's no point in me saying, oh, what did you think of that key change there or something like that. But just pr bringing things back to its very base musical uh, function. I'll say to her, how does this music make you feel? And I think that's a really good question because when I put on uh, gypsy jazz when I'm in the car or I'm listening to some country music or I'm listening to some modern progressive metal or um, I put on some Beethoven while we're cooking, um, the emotional response that you give to music is a very, very important indication of, uh, well, <laughs> how the music makes you feel. It's a very good way to kind of gauge um, a reaction to music is how it makes you feel, what image it conjures up in your mind. You don't need to be able to describe it, just thinking objectively. How does this make me feel? Now the answers are going to be different from person to person, that's absolutely fine, but this is the first step in moving towards a world where you're listening to music a little bit better. Now I've got an exercise for you, and I often get criticised by people online for this, and my friends, but my friends know me well enough to know this isn't really the case. People say that I'm very negative. Levi, you're so negative. You always say such negative things. Don't you have any positive things to say about things? And this always baffled me because my rule to be uh, a better kind of uh, music critic or, or student or, or teacher or anything, the best way for me to learn, uh, the best way for me to progress is what I do is I go out of my way when I listen to something, I go out of my way to find something about it that I like. And I go out of my way to find something about it that I don't like. I do my absolute best to do that. So music that I absolutely love, I can put on my favorite CDs of all time, my favorite albums, my favorite artists, and chances are I can be honest, I can be objective with you and say, well, I don't like this aspect of it. It could be the mix, it could be the note choice in a solo, it could be a transition between sections, it could be um, an example that pops into my head for some reason is my favourite Nile Rodgers guitar part is the uh, Diana Ross uh, tune I'm Coming Out. Great tune, really, really cool uh, guitar part. But every time I listen to that song, I'm always grabbed by the snare fill in the intro. To me, it sounds stiff and out of time. Every time I hear it, it doesn't sound quite right to my ears. Um, still love the song though and being able to listen to something you love and be honest enough to say something about it that maybe isn't perfect is a good thing it's a very good thing because it means you won't react so aggressively when someone else listens to the music that you love and can tell you something that they don't enjoy about it but also on the flip side it's even more useful to be able to listen to music that you don't initially like something music that doesn't grab you but still be able to find something good about it I don't think we can deny the fact that when you listen to country music, if we listen to something like, um, uh, let's pick a tune, uh, you're listening to uh, Brad Paisley, Waiting on a Woman. Now, I love Brad Paisley, obviously, um, got enough Brad Paisley love over the years, huge Brad Paisley fan, and uh, I love his music for lots and lots of reasons. One of them is the, the songs, the lyrical content, the way the music tells a story. That's cool. But you might not be into that. You might find it cheesy or a bit romantic or however, that's fine. But I challenge you to listen to a song like Waiting on a Woman and listen to the guitar solo and not go, wow, that was some tasty guitar playing. I enjoyed that. Or um, on a song like uh, Cliffs of Rock City, 
just the way the pedal steel begins the track. Now, when I first heard that, I didn't know what instrument that was. I just assumed that it was a guitar doing something weird with harmonics. Um, but over time, I've come to learn, oh, that's, that's a pedal steel, and you hear it all the time over country music, like on um, uh, The World would be another Brad Paisley song with a great pedal steel solo on, or Water is another one that has a great pedal steel solo on. And over time, I start to develop this appreciation for things about country music that I enjoy. So that might be the pedal steel or uh, the, the way that the guitar players tend to phrase in solos and things like that. And before you know it, you start getting appreciations for these areas of a genre that you might not have had before. Um, I love the, the aggression and snap that you get when you listen to gypsy uh, jazz players. And it's very obvious to me when you listen to a gypsy jazz player who isn't necessarily someone that's played the style for a long time. They might be a good, uh, good jazz bebop player who then has picked up gypsy guitar and has been playing for a year. To my ears, you can usually hear those players. Um, I'm one of those players. I don't sound authentic. And it's because there's so much more to the style in the way that the notes are attacked. And it, something about it very, is very visceral. And I, I really enjoy that. It, it, it speaks to me. So being able to pick out that and hone in on that was something that kind of got me into the sound of gypsy jazz and the flair that players like Jimmy Rosenberg have. Now, when I initially started listening to gypsy jazz players, when I might have been 13 or 14, when my uh, granddad gave me a Django CD, I couldn't get into it. And I might be able to say now that looking back, the reason for that might have been because of the recording quality. And still to this day, I, I love Django's music now, but I can still say, I'm not crazy about the recording quality on this, or I'm not crazy how uh, in European jazz there tends to be a lot of clarinet, more so than when you go to the uh, American jazz, you tend to hear it have a lot more reed horn horns and reed instruments, the saxophones um, and the trumpets, defining sounds there. The last little tip that I would give you is and this was presented by one of my pals, listen to everything five times. Give everything a fair five time chance. Now, some people have uh, said to me that you need to give music more than that. But what I'm getting at is don't just listen to something once and then write it off. Do your best to listen to some music in a few settings because you'd be surprised how much things can grow on you. I've uh, recently been enjoying the um, Mark Gettieri album and the first track on that, Goon Squad, is uh, it's quite cool but there's a, there's a melody when it breaks into the chorus um, that I listened to it once and I thought that's quite cool. And then a couple of days later, I had it on again when I was walking somewhere, and I was like, I really like that melody. That's definitely a really cool melody. And then a couple of days later, this is where you know it's starting to take hook. You hear the melody in your head. Now that's a wonderful moment in music because your, your, uh, your ear is starting to develop. You're starting to latch onto things that you hadn't previously latched onto. And before you know it, you're spending more time listening to an artist to seek out more of those moments. So giving yourself a chance to become familiar with vocabulary is a, a great use of your time. Now, I should be super, super clear when I say this. Music is still always going to be subjective. There's no objective truth to music. You can state objective facts about music, but let me be real clear. You cannot, under any circumstances, list off 50 reasons why something is good and then explain that to someone else and expect them to also agree that that makes the music good. That might be a good explanation as to why you enjoy the music, but it is not. That does not equal a reason why someone else has to enjoy the music. Really important you understand that because we do see a lot of this online, people arguing, people saying, um, you know, Sean Lane's the greatest ever and then someone like Tom Crow saying, nah, I don't get it. And then people attacking Tom for that. It's okay, you don't. You can present Tom Crow with 500 reasons why you love Sean Lane and that's all you have. You have 500 reasons why you love Sean Lane. You can never convince people with music and I think that's the best part about music, the fact that we can put our own time into it and we can uh, listen and explore and we come up with our own um, musical tastes. It's much like food, we all have flavors that we like and cuisines that we tend to lean towards and certain spices that you like. And I think that's exactly how music is and should be. Celebrate the fact that we're all different. So that's uh, the point there, I guess. Um, and the last thing is, 
I think that the point of this is to get you to listening to tons of different music. It's great to listen to new music for one simple reason. The best musicians have a wide and varied diet. In fact, in the professional world, uh, working for magazines and things like that, I've interviewed quite a lot of players now, and I like to ask about, you know, kind of off-camera type things, I like to ask about things like, what are you, you know, what are you listening to at the moment? And have you heard this? And what do you think of this? And I've never heard true professionals ever write things off. Just go, no, I don't like that. Just dismiss it offhand. Um, Scott Henderson's a great example. When you think of the Guitar Wank podcast, he's often talking about artists like Beyonce on there, which is cool because there's great stuff in Beyonce's music. Earlier I was talking about Diana Ross, you know. So the point I'm getting at there is Scott doesn't write off Beyonce's music in the same way that I know a lot of my students potentially would. They find it shocking when I say, um, you know, I really, uh, really enjoy the Spice Girls or... Um, I love Jamiroquai, or Maroon 5 actually would be a better example. The first two Maroon 5 albums are absolutely fantastic. Jane Valentine is a killer guitar player and a great writer. Um, and people, they, they push that away. No, that can't be right. When I say, uh, you know, I like Nickelback, there's tons of Nickelback stuff that I love. Um, there's stuff that I don't like, but I can still say, I like this about them. I like this song for this reason. That's awesome. And having this wide palette of music is the most important thing because not only will it help you develop as a player, it's going to help keep you passionate about music. I've been doing the music game for a very, very long time now, and music would have probably become quite stale and repetitive for me if I didn't have such an eclectic taste in music. It's amazing being able to pick up a classical guitar and play a country finger style for a week, um, and then pick up a slide guitar in E uh, standard uh, a Telecaster in e, open E tuning and play some Derek Truck stuff, and then pick up one of my Vigiers and play some, you know, some Shred stuff, um, some Michael Romeo stuff, and then play some Gypsy Jazz and things like that. Like, I'm not saying everyone has to do that, but my point is this wide, varied taste is what has kept me so passionate about music for so many years. And hopefully, as long as I stay objective, that passion's going to be here for many, many more years. But what do you guys think? If you have anything to say on this, drop a comment below, hit the subscribe button, share, and tell this channel, uh, tell your friends about this channel. There we go. The last thing I'd like to say is a massive, massive shout out, a massive thank you to my wonderful supporters over on patreon.com. You guys help to make these videos happen, and uh, you're really starting to help make change in my life, um, which is amazing. Um, this is actually the last video you're gonna see in this studio. This is all coming down tomorrow. We're moving into a new house um, on Friday. It's Wednesday night now. So lots and lots of change going on in the Clay family, which is awesome. And I'm hoping to bring you even better content and these wonderful people help make that happen. If you would like to support this channel, you can do so on Patreon, link below, for as little as a dollar. And that gets you access to our private patron only Facebook group. Uh, there's about 40 guys in there and we're all talking about transcriptions and I'm giving them feedback on their transcriptions and we're sharing videos and exclusive stuff and feedback things and it's lots of fun. If you want to join us in there, you can do that just by joining us on Patreon, as I say, for as little as a dollar. But there's lots of other cool things that you can get. If you're not interested in that, of course, as I say, that's absolutely fine. Um, I just appreciate you watching the videos. Hit that subscribe button, tell your pals about it, drop me a like and a comment always helps. Peace out, guys. It has been my pleasure to serve, to talk, to entertain, to inform, and to make you think. And I'll be back for another video soon. Bye. <laughs>